Hello, my name is Julia Krause. It is April 19th, 2023. I am here with the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program. This interview is part of the Tidewater Main Street Project. Who do I have the pleasure of speaking to today? Nancy West. Nancy West. And when and where were you born? I was born um, in Wake, Virginia, right down the road, um, July 1955. Can we have the day in July? July 29th, 1955. Um, okay. um, and what were your parents' names and occupations? My mother's name is Carstella West. And my dad's name is Alfred West. Mm -hmm. And they were all born where I live. So. And, and what did they do for a living? My mom was basically a homemaker. Mm -hmm. And my dad did so many things. And how much time do you have? <laughs> His main job, he drove a tractor trailer for mm -hmm. M&G Transportation in Gloucester. Mm -hmm. um, he did overnight. So he would... Um, leave on a Sunday, come back Monday, leave on a Tuesday, come back Wednesday, leave on a Thursday, come back Friday. In the meantime, he raised hogs, lots and lots of hogs. We had a cow, we had chickens, and he also um, farmed. He acquired over 100 acres of land. So he farmed soybeans, wheat, and corn. Um, he collected well, they weren't old cars back then, but antique cars, classic cars. And he sold parts. He also um, cut them up and took them to Richmond for, for um, metal, salvage metal. So he re recycled metal back then. And when the price of metal went down, he stopped doing it. So we have over 200 cars in the woods today behind our house that we are recycling. <laughs> um, and what was it like to grow up around here? It was great. We had, a, we had a great life. Great, even, just a great life. Um, I grew up with about 30 first cousins. About five of them started school first grade with me. We caught the bus together. They were my only friends, really, my first cousins. And until we met people in school, of course, but um, life was good. I enjoyed life in Middlesex County as a child. Mm -hmm. And um, your, so your family lived here. Like, do you know, like going back generations, if they, they had been here? They've been here. Um, my great-grandfather, which is my paternal grandfather, who raised my father, um, his father was a, was a barrack. And there's a barrack house, like plantation down mm -hmm. in Wake. I think his, his mother came from that plantation or worked at that plantation or whatever. And, um, but his name was um, George West. And um, he grew up right up the road from us. So we were all in Wake, never left Wake until I graduated high school. Um, when did you attend St. Clair Walker High School? Well, it was the eighth grade. So mm -hmm. I think, what, 69, mm -hmm. 1969? Oh, I'm sorry. When I graduated from Rappahannock Central Elementary School, which was right across the road, which was segregated, um, as I said, we were the last eighth grade class to attend St. Clair Walker as a high school. Mm. And uh, so just for the eighth grade, uh, did any other family members attend St. Clair Walker High School? All of my family members, my mother, my brother, my sister, and myself, <laughs> aunts, uh, aunts and uncles on my dad's side and on my mother's side, all of my aunts, all of my uncles. Do you know when they attended? Mm, well, only one aunt is living 
that attended. Um, my mother's older sister, um, Ella Burke, mm. graduated right before she did. Um, another uh, aunt, Ann Wake, Julia Wake, they all played basketball, they were into sports. Um, on my dad's side, all of his brothers and sisters attended. So I don't know what year. It was probably in the, in the 60s, late 50s, 60s, for my uncles and aunts. And your older sister attended, what was her name? Her name was Lois Jean mm -hmm. West. So she was in the last graduating class of 69. I believe 69. Um, what are your earliest memories of St. Clair Walker High School? Just being excited about being in high school. Um, we were just programmed to, to learn. Um, I enjoyed biology class. I enjoyed um, dissecting a frog. I enjoyed using the, um, what was those things called, the Bunsen burners? Mm -hmm in the lab. I enjoyed my teachers. I felt like my teachers really cared and, and wanted us to be the best we could be. I heard some of the teachers tell some of the students, you know, I taught your mother, I taught your brother, I taught your sister, I know what you can do. So they had really high expectations of us. And high school for me was fun. It was a lot of fun. That's great. Um. What were your conversations at, about school at home like? Mm, didn't really, I don't know if we had <laughs> conversations. Just, did you do your homework and really didn't have conversations. Um, most of the, some of the teachers attended my church, so mm -hmm. I was around them all the time. Um, Mrs. Easter Holmes, um, who else? Mrs. Harris, Ms. Joan Harris, she attends my church today. So we would see our teachers at church and at outside activities. Mm -hmm. I remember at St. Clair Walker, we did have a May Day. That was a lot of fun. And um, did, your did your family have any expectations of school or, I don't know, what, was it something you all valued or? Oh, we did, and I didn't, my mother didn't tell us this, but my mother told my father that all of her children were going to college. She had six children, three boys and three girls, and she told my father, although we were considered to be poor, <laughs> she told my father all of her children were going to college. And um, that my older brother, who I think will be interviewed on Friday, he ended up skipping two grades before high school. He graduated at 16, and he was at Virginia Union at 16 years old. So then my older sister went to Virginia Union. So then I thought I would go to Virginia Union, but I didn't go to high school right out of college. Right I didn't go to college right after high school. I, in 74, I left the area and worked, and then I went to college after, while working. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was your older brother's name? Alfred Larry West. So he, I think he's going to be interviewed Friday. Okay. Um, where did you, may I ask, where, where you went to college, in, uh, where you ended up going to college? I moved to Maryland in 74. Mm -hmm. I, um, I was working and I decided I wanted to be a homicide detective. So someone told me, well, just join the D.C. Police Department, and that's the quickest way to be in a homicide detective. So that's what I did. I was a police officer for a couple of years. And when I left the department, I um, went to computer school. There was a computer school in, in uh, Springfield, Virginia, called Computer Learning Center. So I went to computer school, became a programmer, and... Um, and I got a job with, with a company called Northern Telecom as a systems engineer. So then I decided to go to college in D.C., which was called Southeastern University. It no longer exists. And um, when that, when I stopped going there, I 
I did a college called National Lewis University. So that's where I got my degree in business management. And my company paid for most of it. What company was that? Northern Telecom. Northern Telecom. It's called, well, it's Northern Telecom, and now it's called Nortel, and they might not be in business anymore. <laughs> um, taking a step back, uh, when you were in high school, how did you get to school? School bus. School. Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing I realized being segregated, mm -hmm. when we integrated, I found out we had the old school buses mm -hmm. and the white kids had the new school buses. We had the used school books, textbooks, and they had the new textbooks. So that's when I realized things were separate but not equal when we, when we integrated. Yeah. And what, what was the, ex can you tell me anything about like what the experience of integrating was like? Well, the teachers were different. Most of the mm -hmm. teachers were white. A lot of them didn't call on you when you raised your hand. Mm -hmm. And I think they graded us differently. They knew the white kids because they had been in the system for years, and especially the older teachers. They didn't call on you when you raised your hand. but. Integrating, I got to play basketball because we didn't have a girls basketball team at Middlesex High when I played, when I attended. So I got to play basketball, which was great, and track and field and do other things once we integrated. But you don't know that you, what you don't know when we were at St. Clair Walker. And when you were at St. Clair Walker, like what teachers impacted your experience most, most at St. Clair Walker? Mm, all of them did, but mostly um, Mrs. Easter Holmes, who attended my church. It's like she was, we were around her more. Mm -hmm. And they just all had high expectations of us. And they didn't play when it came to education. What did Mrs. Easter Holmes, what, what did she teach? I think she taught history or social studies or civics or something, mm -hmm. and she was the guidance counselor. So you would meet with her as far as, um, you know, what your, what your goals were after graduation. Cool. Yeah. Um, what sorts of, I know it's r related in some ways, but what sorts of role models or mentors did you have in school? Oh, we was talking specifically at St. Clair Walker. Um, any, any school work. Well, you're saying, you're shaking your head, yes. Oh, yes. Okay, I mean, yeah, specifically they, to St. Clair Walker. Well, Mrs. Joan Harris taught me um, science or biology, one of them. She was at our church also. She's still at the church. She sung on the choir. Um, it's like you always had to be on your best behavior. I don't care if you're in the school or out of school. And then the teachers knew your, your parents. Mm -hmm. So it's really, you couldn't get away with anything because they knew your parents and they attended church with you and, uh, and social events. So, um, but all my, I, I liked all of my teachers. I sp um, particularly liked Mrs. Amy, who was our physical ed teacher. She was really good in that before we played a sport, we had to learn the history of the sport and we had to learn the rules before we even played. So she, she taught me a lot. Um, and uh, what memories from class, like lessons, celebrations, or examinations really stick out to you? Um, the memories would be, I was a cheerleader. So, and, and the boys basketball team, we were, we were probably number one in basketball. So I was a cheerleader. Um, my sister took modern dance, so I would watch her performance. Uh, I don't know. I, I, was, I was into sports. I, I liked physical ed, and I liked going outside and playing soccer and, and different sports. Um, those were just good memories good, and good friends. I think everybody got along. 
in high school? Um, um, what do you remember about lunchtime, the food, the cafeteria? The food was excellent. I just remember the cooks, um, and the food was excellent. Um, we, there was no such, such thing as throwing food in the cafeteria. That was non-existence in probably black schools. It's no throwing food, food fights. Um, and we had a lot of respect for our cooks. Yeah. Um, can you describe your experiences with May Day and other special events? Well, May Day was just a fun time. Mom wrapping the maypole, putting on your, your dresses and dancing around and the snacks, the refreshments, beautiful day outside. So May Day was really nice. It was it was a nice and it was a traditional thing because my mom did May Day. Yeah. So. Um, can you describe any like. I know you were a cheerleader. Can you describe any like uh, assemblies or special activities that happen? Assemblies. Um, I don't remember having pep rallies at St. Clair Walk. I, maybe we did have it, but um, I don't remember assemblies. <laughs> <laughs> um, any like other extracurricular activities you were involved in? Um, only thing I'm thinking about now is we had a teacher from Middlesex High, a white teacher, Mrs. Tuning, came down on certain days and taught us music, mm -hmm. and I like that. Were you ever in the choir or anything? I didn't join the choir when I went to Middlesex High. Mm -hmm. I joined a lot of other clubs, but not the choir. Mm -hmm. Um... What were some of your biggest accomplishments in and out of school? My big, in school, my biggest accomplishments? I, I got good grades. <laughs> I got good grades, that's, yeah. What about out of school? Out of school? Mm -hmm. Having children, raising children, having grandkids and working my career. I, I had a, um, different careers. As I said, I was, um, when I moved to Maryland, my first job was as a waitress. And then I joined the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department. And then I went to school and became a programmer. And then I became a system engineer. And then I did help desk stuff. I became a technical trainer. I, I traveled a lot. And back then, it was unusual for a black woman to travel alone, mm -hmm. business travel. So I traveled all over the country, um, business travel. I learned a lot, met a lot of different people. Um, what, how many kids did you have? I had two boys. Can you tell me their names? Brandon Bagby and Paul Bagby. And... Um... Uh, oh yeah, were there any, what kind of tough times, were there any tough times in school? Only tough time I would say, um, I don't know, my dad had us thinking we were dirt poor. Mm. So when you wanted a new pair of shoes or dress, you had to justify it. Which I think that, that made me want to have my own money. Because I had to ask him, you know, my dad, when he was at home, he was always working. So when he was at the house, he was, he was fixing the tractor or he was on the tractor. So if I wanted a new dress or a new pair of shoes, I had to find out what field he was in and run out to the field and say, you know, Dad, I need, you know, such and such. And he'd make me justify it. And then he'd reach in his pocket and give me the money and my mom would take me to the store and I would buy it. But he had us thinking we were dirt poor, which I guess we were, but all of our needs were being met, so. And we, we lived a frugal, very frugal lifestyle. What regional or national news do you remember hearing about when you were school-aged? When I was school-aged, I remember um, President Kennedy being shot. I remember coming home and my mom was sitting there crying, and she told me the president had just gotten shot. 
I remember when the spaceship, um, where did they go? I guess they went to, where did they go? Mars? The moon? Mm -hmm. The moon? For, I remember that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what year it was, but I remember that. I remember um, when Martin Luther King was killed and the riots in D.C. I wasn't in D.C. at the time, but I remember the riots. Um, remember black and white TVs and then then color TVs. <laughs> we were pr um, probably the first family on our road that got a telephone. I remember party lines. You pick up the phone and somebody was talking on it. So you click, 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 click and try to get them off, but they wouldn't get off. And we had like six families on the party line. So I remember that. I remember being baptized at, in, at Grafton Baptist Church, uh, Vacation Bible School. Uh, what else? I'm sure there's other stuff, but I can't remember it. <laughs> Did you talk about any of these like big national events in school? I don't remember talking about it. Not really having a discussion mm -hmm. about it, but no. I don't remember. Were you involved in any organizing in the community or was your family like... Organizing? Like, um, like any organizations like the NAACP or anything? I wasn't, not, mm -hmm. not in school, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I remember um, when I turned 18, I, I registered to vote. Mm -hmm. And that year was a voting year and I, re and I voted every time since. I remember getting my driver's license back then at 15 and eight months. It's because if you, if you took driver's ed, which I did, and Mr. McLaurin um, taught me driver's ed over the summer, the driving part of it. And, but I was driving, being I lived on a farm, I was always driving tractors and trucks anyway. So I was a driver when I took driver's ed. So I got my license at 15 and eight months. Um, um, what do you remember about hearing news about integration nationally and in the state? Um, all I remember being at Rappahannock Central Elementary and them, them telling us that after the eighth grade we were going to integrate, I remember over half of the class being failed, they failed. So with 70 some people in our class, only 28 of us went to St. Clair Walker in the eighth grade. And I, I felt bad about that. I see um, classmates now that should have graduated with us, but I don't know. They kept saying we were the cream of the crop. So out of 70 some kids, only 28 came to St. Clair Walker at, in the eighth grade class. And all of us graduated in 73 um, from Middlesex High School. So we didn't, we didn't really lose anybody, I don't think. Do you know why it was that so many students were failed? I kind of think because we were going to integrate the, the following year, mm -hmm. they were just trying to send the cream of the crop to Middlesex High School. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my thinking. Uh -huh. Because it was all based on one test you took at the end of the year, whether you passed the seventh grade or not. And like I said, over half of the class did not make it with us. Um, in what way did your experience at St. Clair Walker High School affect your life, like socially, educationally, civically, following your graduation? At St. Club, well, I was only, only there for a year. Uh, I think my life was more affected when we integrated. Mm -hmm. I think that prepared me more for the real world. Um, what was your occupation after you finished school? I know we've yeah, covered I, I that. Yeah, I was but... a waitress. Well, I worked as a waitress in school down at Taylor's Restaurant in Deltaville. No, I'm sorry, I was not a waitress. I was a dishwasher mm -hmm. down at Taylor's Restaurant in Deltaville while I was in school during the summer. 
So when I left in 74, I, uh, as I said, I got a job as a waitress, and then I got a job as a police cadet, and then a police officer. Then I got a job as a programmer, system engineer, help desk person, technical trainer. So. Um, now I have some questions about Cook's Corner. Um, what are your earliest memories of Cook's Corner or of hearing about Cook's Corner? Well, I didn't hang out at Cook's Corner. Um, there was a barbershop there. Mm -hmm. I remember taking my aunt, who didn't drive, I remember taking her and I had three, four male cousins. So I remember her asking my mom, could I take her to take them to the barbershop? So I used to take them to Cook's Corner to the barbershop. I remember a, a baseball field at Cook's Corner. They play baseball games. Uh, I think I went to Herman Wake's once or twice, not much, wasn't allowed, really allowed, allowed there. I went to Mrs. Jackson's. Um, we went there to get gas and ice cream. And I, um, so basically, Coast Corner, I came to school and then did those things. And then there was a bank in Cook's Corner also. Was the ice cream good? I guess it was. There's no such thing as bad ice cream. <laughs> Um, so you, you only went to Herman Wake's a couple of times. Um, do you remember any stories though? Um, all I remember is <laughs> it was one way in and one way out. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing of somebody shooting up there. They would usually shoot in the air and people would jump out of windows or, or that one door. They would <laughs> come out of there. But I wasn't really allowed to go to the dance up there. Do you remember Mr. Butler Harris's outdoor movie? No, no. I remember a movie being uh, up near Jamaica somewhere, but and that my parents would take me to. But I don't know what it was. Um, and you remember the baseball field? Did you ever go any go to any games? I remember maybe on Sunday going to a game or two. You know, back then in at Middlesex at St. Clair Walk, I was only 13, 12, 13, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you remember, what, like, what do you remember about Mr. Lynn Davis's restaurant slash Duke joint? Don't remember that. Don't remember. Um, what do you remember about other Cook's Corner establishments through your own experience or other people's experiences? All I remember is the barbershop and the, um, the bank, basically. What would you usually do when you um, went, like, it was your aunt that you brought to the barbershop? I brought her. She had four sons, so mm. I took them to the barbershop. I and mean, we'd just sit in the car. We didn't, you, <laughs> women didn't really, girls didn't go in a barbershop. Mm back then, so you sit in the car. Um, uh, is there anything you think? Um, well, one thing that you had said was that you felt integration prepared you more for life than your year at St. Clair Walker. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, when I say prepared me more for, for real, the real world, mm -hmm. um, with interacting with white people and how they looked at us and how they treated us, I think, um, St. Cloud, I mean, Middlesex High, of course, prepared me more for that because I feel like I experienced racism at Middlesex High. So it, it just taught me how a lot of things about white people. <laughs> Do you have any specific experiences? Well, as I said, teachers would look right at you and wouldn't um, call on you. Mm -hmm. um, I think. They graded us differently. Um, as I said, um, I have one white classmate who, who says things like, oh yeah, I was, um, he was, this person was valedictorian and this person was salutatorian and I was third and do, 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 do. But those people have been in that system mm -hmm. their whole lives. Teachers knew them, they knew their parents. Um, I graduated pretty high in the class 
but still they they had been in the system and then i don't know if they were counting their grades from eighth grade to 12th or what because i didn't i didn't attend until ninth grade so yeah so what was it like what were your interactions with white students like i got along mm -hmm. um I think a lot of them liked me because I was a basketball star mm. at Middlesex High School. And I pretty much mind my own business. I went to school, got my lesson, and played basketball. <laughs> so I think a lot of them liked me because of that. Is there anything else you wanted to add for the record? I can't think of anything else. Okay. okay. Perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.